In this third uh, video uh, lecture as an introduction to groups, uh, we're going to discuss group development. And some of you may have uh, heard of this uh, uh, perspective uh, on group development, uh, in which we view groups uh, in terms of uh, forming, storming, norming, performing, uh, and adjourning. So essentially this is a uh, framework within which uh, we view uh, how well developed uh, groups are. Uh, and the two principal issues that we'll examine in, in each of these stages of group development relates to the mission uh, with which the, uh, the group is tasked and interpersonal relationships uh, between the individuals in that group. Forming is uh, just as uh, the name implies. Uh, it's when a group is uh, newly formed. Uh, this is, uh, in most police organizations, a, uh, an unusual occurrence, at least in terms of formal or command groups. Uh, with task groups, uh, it may uh, occur uh, more frequently in uh, which you bring together a, a group of people to, uh, to focus on a particular uh, problem. Uh, and so it, it's a, a new group uh, within the organization. Uh, when a new group uh, comes together, uh, the mission is, is unclear uh, and uh, roles uh, need to, uh, to ne be negotiated. Uh, so uh, the first uh, order of business is to, uh, to come to a clear understanding of what the mission is uh, and to negotiate roles uh, for all the individuals in terms of, of how they will contribute to accomplishing that mission. Uh, and in interpersonal relationships uh, are uh, at that time uh, untried. Uh, in that uh, while people may be knowledgeable of one another, uh, they, they may not have uh, worked uh, closely together uh, in terms of, of how they uh, uh, interrelate. Uh, and uh, this stage is uh, uh, complete uh, when members view themselves uh, as a member of, of that group. And it can occur very quickly or it uh, may take longer uh, depending on the, uh, the task and the individuals uh, assigned to the group and how much, especially if it's a task group, uh, how much time they're provided to, uh, to focus on that uh, task uh, in addition to their other duties in the organization. Storming uh, is uh, also, as the name uh, implies, uh, it's the period uh, during which there's a conflict and uh, confrontation. Uh, in terms of the mission, uh, typically there's disagreement over the group goals. Uh, and uh, that disagreement uh, results in uh, redefinition of, of group goals. Uh, rarely is a group provided uh, specific enough guidance uh, about uh, the goals and in particular how to, uh, to accomplish those goals uh, in order for there to be a quick agreement uh, about that. Uh, interpersonal relations uh, are, are again uh, uh, tried and uh, some withdrawal may be possible. Some individuals may uh, come to find that uh, they're unable to, uh, to work uh, with others in the group and, and may uh, withdraw. Uh, it's important to, uh, to manage conflict, uh, not to suppress it. Uh, while conflict has negative connotations, uh, conflict is necessary in order to accomplish uh, more. Uh, without disagreement, uh, we can't uh, fully discuss um, all of the implications of, of whatever it is we, we fully disagree. Uh, about uh, and uh, again conflict is necessary to avoid things like groupthink and, and we'll talk more about those issues in uh, uh, intergroup conflict uh, later in, in this area. Uh, norming is the stage of development in which you uh, begin to achieve some cooperation uh, and collaboration. Uh, in related to the mission well, we get a greater exchange of, of information and the group becomes more cohesive uh, because it's focused on mutually agree, agreed uh, group goals. Remember in the, in the storming stage we, uh, uh, there was conflict over what the, the mission was, uh, what our goals were, how we're going to accomplish it. Uh, but once that conflict's been overcome and there's agreement, uh, then uh, the, the group becomes naturally uh, more cohesive. Uh, interpersonal relations uh, improve here. Uh, there's typically mutual attraction and, and commitment to the group and uh, behavioral norms are, are established uh, and accepted. Uh, so uh, once we've uh, agreed upon those uh, norms, uh, roles, uh, and status, uh, we typically uh, become more accepting of them uh, and, uh, and, and adhere to those. Uh, now in, in many organizations uh, this is typically where uh, groups uh, become what we call stuck. Uh, stuck in that uh, it's difficult for them uh, to move uh, beyond this stage. 
Um, sometimes that occurs um, uh, because of uh, turnover in the group uh, where we're never able to, uh, to fully become as cohesive uh, as we would like, uh, never able to fully uh, focus on, uh, on the task uh, of accomplishing the mission because uh, we're, we're more focused on, on managing interpersonal relationships, uh, not out of a, any, any pejorative context, but uh, simply that uh, um, as new members come into the group, we, we have to uh, devote time and energy uh, to socializing them. Uh, performing is when a group becomes uh, fully functional. Uh, almost all of the energy in the group is focused uh, on the mission. Uh, very little of it is focused on interpersonal relations because roles are, are understood, uh, accepted. Uh, and this is the point uh, at which uh, actually some uh, level of deviance uh, is accepted uh, from group uh, norms and, and roles uh, as long as it's uh, mission focused. So, uh, at this stage, uh, groups are, are typically more uh, accepting of, of, of deviation uh, in order to experiment uh, to accomplish the, uh, the group's goals. Uh, in groups uh, that achieve this level, uh, that can stay there uh, absent any, any disturbance or change. Uh, typically, uh, the two factors that will uh, disturb or, or create change that, uh, that may cause a group to regress uh, is an inordinate amount of turnover uh, and uh, in many organizational contexts uh, that's been defined as, as about more than 10% uh, turnover uh, in, in any given uh, period in, in which it's analyzed. So if you have more than about one out of every 10 people in a group uh, turning over uh, frequently then uh, uh, it, it detracts from efforts uh, toward the mission. Uh, another change is a change in, in mission. Obviously, if we have a change in mission, uh, the group regresses uh, to the point where there's a, a conflict over the mission, uh, roles are redefined, uh, and then the group can, uh, can move back up and through uh, norming uh, and, and then back into performing. Uh, a journey. Uh, some groups come to uh, an end. Uh, typically, formal uh, command uh, groups uh, don't come to an end in, in many organizations, uh, but uh, very often task groups do. Uh, if you bring together a committee uh, to uh, focus on a particular problem, once that problem is solved, uh, then uh, that task group uh, may, uh, uh, may be d disbanded. Uh, and uh, again, these are typically temporary groups. Uh, and again, uh, at times, permanent groups uh, may fail to survive. Uh, that may occur due to budget cuts, uh, organizational change, uh, or restructuring, uh, but typically uh, uh, most police organizations uh, don't see much uh, in terms of permanent groups failing to survive. Uh, interpersonal relations are, are important uh, uh, because uh, you know they're both uh, positive and negative emotions associated with, uh, with groups. Uh, if it's a, a highly cohesive, uh, highly functional, uh, you know, a, a performing group, uh, then uh, it provides uh, satisfaction to the individuals. Uh, and while there's satisfaction related to accomplishing the mission, uh, there's also uh, a, a dissatisfaction in terms of, of, of not continuing to uh, be a member of that group, uh, both socially and uh, professionally. Uh, the key consideration uh, about a journey is the plan for the end of the group. Um, uh, how do we uh, record its history, its legacies, what lessons do we learn uh, from it uh, so that uh, you know, future groups who, who may come together can uh, learn from uh, what, uh, what that group uh, was able to uh, accomplish.